Good morning, friends. It's my honor, privilege, and I'm very happy to be here in the Sunday morning. So, thank you all the attendees, and this is live on Facebook. Thank you so much for your presence over here. So, we're gonna start this webinar today's webinar. So, dear friends, we are going to discuss today how to manage stress during this challenging time because we all know that we are undergoing one of the toughest time in the human history. So, how? So, there's an atmosphere of stress, anxiety, hopelessness, depression. So, how to face this challenging situation and how to maintain your holistic health during this challenging time? We are going to discuss these things today. So I would like to thank you from bottom of my heart for being here because in Sunday morning you might be doing so many things, but you choose to attend this webinar. So I would like to thank uh, all of you for joining on Facebook Live, on Zoom. Thank you so much. Now what we are going to learn today. So you're going to learn what is stress, what changes occur in our body during stress so that and what are the signs and symptoms of stress so that you can identify it early and rectify it. Then you will learn three stress management strategies. If you implement it, will, it will help you to lead healthy, happy and more fulfilling life. Okay. And on addition, you will learn 12 secret, powerful secret to remain mentally and physically fit during this Corona pandemic. Okay. So, and at the end of this uh, webinar, I'm going to uh, tell you how to join my community. If you want to take your health into the next level, then I would like to invite you to my community. So just to introduce myself, five years back, my health was in a very bad shape. I was stressed out, burnt out. I had put on 10 kg of weight. I was looking much older than my chronological age. Then I stopped, I introspected. I took my health more seriously. I read hundreds of book on health, self-help book, spirituality. And with the fusion of this knowledge, which I acquired after reading hundreds of book and my medical knowledge, I formulated certain principle. I implemented it and it completely transformed my life. So hi, my name is Dr. Sunil Sabde. I'm a pediatric neurologist and stress management consultant, wellness coach, and international number one bestseller author. And my book, O oh Stress, Give Me a Break, has become international number one bestseller. So I'm gonna discuss this principle with you, okay? So, and again, recently I published a, a book, 17 Powerful Secret to Manage Stress During Corona Pandemic. So, We'll just start the talk today. We all know that the incidence of communicable diseases like obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart diseases are increasing exponentially all over the world. And these disorders kill almost 40 million people worldwide. Okay. As far as India is concerned, 4.8 million of people die because of these non-communicable disorders. Now, treating these non-communicable disorders are a very expensive affair. If we are not going to manage this disorder properly, then the world is going to cost, it is going to cost world $47 trillion to treat these disorders. Okay, and as far as India is concerned, it will cost $4.5 trillion. So the cost is quite a mind boggling. Now, why these disorders are increasing? In the research, it is found that the causes of these diseases are stress. The most important cause is stress. Maybe mental stress, environmental stress, family stress, job stress, then urbanization, change in lifestyle, sedentary lifestyles. We are not mowing, we are not exercising, we are becoming a couch, a couch potato. Unhealthy diet, we are eating more of processed food, more of sugars. 
high caloric intake lack of exercise smoking and tobacco use alcohol abuse environmental toxins and pollution so these are the causes which are responsible for the increase in this uh, disorders now to add fuel to the fire now there is this corona pandemic okay so all the people all over the world has been affected by this corona pandemic millions of people has suffered millions of people has died and billions of people has lost their job there is an atmosphere of stress anxiety depression and hopelessness all over and my new there would be more dead because of the mental disease than the disease itself but we have to remember the fact that this too shall pass okay there would be a light at the end of tunnel we will overcome this pandemic the humanity has seen so many pandemic but they have overcome it and we are going to overcome this corona pandemic but the need of the hour is to keep ourselves mentally and physically fit and improve our immunity so i'm going to discuss these things on a standard disclaimer i'd like to tell you that the content of this webinar doesn't provide medical advice it is intended for informational purpose only it is not substitute for professional medical advice diagnosis or treatment never ignore professional medical advice in seeking treatment because of something you have listened during this webinar okay so just uh, we'll start this webinar so what is a stress now the stress is our mental physical and emotional and behavioral reaction to any perceived threat or demands okay now threat uh, the stress is constant we all know that optimum amount of stress is required for growth development and optimum performance and it is called as eu stress i would like to explain it with the help of this graph now this graph you can see on y axis there is a performance and the x axis there is a level of stress now you can see as the level of stress increase the performance increase to the certain extent to the certain level okay and then if the stress is too much and it is persistent then the performance decreases so this is a moderate stress level where your performance is at optimum level eh? so you are highly motivated you have high energy and you are alert if there is a less stress in your life then there would be low performance okay there would be boredom apathy and lethargy while if there is too much of stress then it would lead to various mental and physical disorders okay so less stress is a problem more stress is a pro uh, more stress is a problem optimum amount of stress is required for optimum health i'd like to share one story with you once a delegation went to visit a mental hospital the doctor were showing the delegates the condition of the patient they went into room number 1 then in that room number 1 the patient was in a very pathetic state the patient was crying he was hugging one photograph he was kissing one photograph the delegate asked the doctor why this man become a mad the doctor said this man was in love with a girl named lucy whom he couldn't marry and because of that he become mad okay now they went into room number 2 in room number 2 the man was very aggressive he was hitting one photograph with his shoes he was tearing that photograph the delegates asked the doctor why this man become mad the doctor said he married the same girl named lucy okay so less stress is a problem more stress is a problem optimum amount of stress is required for optimum growth okay so i'd like to share one story with you once a teacher took children in a garden the children were watching the birth of a butterfly the caterpillar was coming out of the cocoon okay while the caterpillar was coming out of the cocoon its body was getting compressed in the egg shell and it was undergoing one uh, it was undergoing very stressful situation the blood was oozing out of its body the caterpillar was under severe pain seeing this 
situation one child broke open the cocoon <clears throat> egg shell took out the caterpillar and put it on a ground and what he found that after a few hours this caterpillar died when the teacher came to know that the children has done these things they scolded the children but the child said sir i was helping this caterpillar i was helping and preventing the pain of the caterpillar the teacher said my dear friend your intention was intention was good but you have done harm to this caterpillar because when the caterpillar was coming out of the cocoon though its body was getting squeezed though he was under severe pain but it was very essential for its survival during that process the excess water from its body was getting squeezed out okay and it would have lead to the the caterpillar would have become light and it would have become uh, it would have fly so as you bypass this process as you bypass this stressful situation you did a wrong thing and because of that the excess water remained in the caterpillar and it died so dear friends it's very important when we are undergoing a stress this is a time when you can have a maximum growth in your life okay so stress is not bad there is only one part on this earth where is there is no stress and it is a a, a graveyard now stress is idiosyncratic what do you mean by that stress to one person may not be stress to other person okay so it depends upon the person's perception personality its locus of control belief system social support and hostility for example climbing a mountain may be stressful situation to one person but it may be enjoyable to other person so it depends upon his thinking pattern its perception and its belief system and stress is increased because of the modern life called as a fast life now this modern man is too busy and stressed out to enjoy the life children are also in a stress because of the lockdown because of they're not able to go to the school so there is a lot of stress in their life as well now we are going to discuss what happens during this fight uh, the stressful situation for example when our ancestors used to go to the jungle when they used to come across the tiger they used to either fight with the tiger or they used to run away from the tiger okay so it is called as fight and flight response so what happen when there is any stressful situation maybe it's a actual situation or it may be a imagined situation the hypothalamus get activated and it signal it sends signals to other parts of the brain like the limbic system then the cortex and the reticular activating system and so many physiological changes occur in a body okay so sympathetic system is activated the hormones like cortisol adrenaline noradrenaline th uh, insulin thyroxins all these hormones are secreted and the end results are the heart rate increases so that your blood is pumped and all the organ receives blood the breathing rate increases so that the blood is oxygenated more oxygen goes to the blood muscle become tense so that you can fight with your enemy or you can run away from your enemy your blood pressure increases your insulin secretion increases so that the fuel is available to deal with this stressful situation the blood flow to the brain lungs heart and muscle it increases blood clotting mechanism is activated so that if there is an injury then the excess blood loss is uh, is avoided on the other hand the fight and flight response decreases the blood flow to the digestive tract kidney skin there is a impaired tissue uh, repair mechanism and there is a <clears throat> impairment of immune system so you are more prone for various disorders so 
that's why if there is a persistent stress then your immunity will be hampered and dear friends during this corona pandemic it's very essential to maintain your immunity now this physiological changes is very essential to deal with the stressful situation and once you deal with that stressful situation the hormones are utilized and it is followed by relaxation response okay so for a short period of time it is very useful but if it is if this physiological changes if this hormone persists in your body for a prolonged period of time then it will act on a end organ and it will lead to mental and physical disease okay so for a short period of time this fight and flight response is very essential to deal with the stressful situation but if it persists then it has a bad effect and unfortunately during this modern time we are under constant stress okay so maybe in the office you are having a, a problem with your boss or with your uh, colleagues in the in the home you may have problem with your spouse so because of that this stress response this stress uh, uh, changes are persistently elevated in our body and it causes diseases so what are the diseases caused by stress now take any disease and stress may be a contributing factor for it so the diseases caused by stress are heart disease high blood pressure stomach problem like acidity the respiratory problem type 2 diabetes back problem headache migraine obesity arthritis cancer skin problem mental health problem immune system problems because we have seen during the stressful situation our immunity take hit our immunity is impaired so you are more prone for various infection like corona infection then stress may cause child partner abuse suicide homicide alcohol drug use abuse tobacco use violence aggressive behavior accident sleep problem sexual problem so these are the various diseases caused by stress now how to diagnose whether you are stressed or not now the first step when you want to change something you have to become aware of the fact that you are having some problem okay when you are having some problem when you become aware of it then you will try to find out its solution okay so stand in front of a mirror look at yourself what is your posture what is your abdomen what is your waist what is your shoulder close your eye and introspect whether you are enjoying the life or you are just carrying out your day mechanically okay so first is awareness you have to evaluate yourself how much stress do you have in your life now to find out the physical health there are certain parameters which you can use at home to find out how fit you are okay so the first parameter is a body a bmi body mass index so the body mass index is calculated with a formula means you have to take your weight in kilogram and height in meter and you have to divide your weight in kilogram by height in meter square okay so just take the screenshot weight divided by height in meter square so this is a body mass index okay so a very simple formula so remember how to calculate the body mass index now what happens this body mass index not necessarily tells you that you have because if there is a increased muscle mass bone mass it will erroneously in, increase your body mass index to high level so so there is a better parameters to uh, diagnose the obesity now there are two types of obesity it's a central obesity and a peripheral obesity okay so apple shaped body or pear shaped body so in the research it is found that those people who have a central obesity there is high incidence of obesity there is high incidence of diabetes hypertension heart disease okay and if there is a pear shaped body there is a less chances of this chronic disorder so this central obesity is a problem so how to measure the central obesity so central obesity is measured with the help of waist to hip ratio so you have to calculate it's very simple if you have a measuring tape 
so you have to take your breast circumference just at the level of umbilicus or just above below of umbilicus and then you have to take a hip circumference at the level of buttock maximum circumference at the level of buttock and then you have to divide the waist by this hip and it will calculate the waist to hip ratio so if the waist to hip ratio is more than 0.9 in male and 0.85 in female then it is a central obesity okay so this is extremely important important than body mass index important than weight so you can measure your weight at home and you will you will find out whether you are obese or not okay so if there is a high central obesity then high chance of ob diabetes high, uh, hypertension and heart disease if the body mass index is more than 30 then it is a obesity so you can use these two parameters but the waist and hip ratio is more appropriate now what are the physical signs of stress dry mouth increased heart rate muscle aches stiffness high blood pressure frequent attack of cold flu because there's a impairment of humidity worsening of existing diseases chest pain headache indigestion constipation stomach cramp sweating nausea trembling fatigue weight gain or loss mental sign like difficulty in concentration making decision decreased memory mind going blank or racing confusion loss of sense of humor decreased libido in attention bad dreams behavioral signs like increased smoking drinking drug use yelling swearing aggression change in eating habit change in sleeping habit then nervousness like nail biting fidgeting and pacing emotional signs like anxiety anger irritability impatience short temper frustration worry and fear so you have to diagnose if these symptoms are present excessively and for prolonged period of time then you have to think that it is you are having stress now you have to measure how much stress do you have whether it's a mild there is a moderate or severe okay so this way you can diagnose how much stress do you have in your life now we are going to discuss the stress management strategies now there are three uh, stress management strategies as far as uh, dealing with the stress is concerned so the first strategy is do not allow stress i want to stay in body use it and have outlet to energy so we have seen that for a short period of time this fight and flight response these hormones are very essential for survival and dealing with the acute stressful situation but for a prolonged period of time it 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 causes diseases so when our ancestors used to go to jungle when they used to come across the tiger this tiger fight with the tiger or they used to run away from tiger and during this process this hormones were getting utilized and it was followed by relaxation response okay but modern time because of the constant stress in office in the home the stress response is constantly elevated and it causes end organ damage so we have to give outlet to this hormone so on a lighter note once there was a company and there was a employee named mulla nasruddin okay so the boss was very atrocious he used to always scold mulla nasruddin that you are useless you do not come on time you do not do the work properly i am going to sack you the mulla nasruddin become very angry he has a strong urge to hit his boss with his shoes but because of the uh, because he was only the uh, 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 breadwinner of the family that's why he kept on continuing the job and he was uh, suffering from the atrocity of the boss but as day by day the atrocity of boss increased the the mulla nasruddin become so angry then that he has a strong urge to hit his boss with his shoes okay he becomes so frightened that he stopped going to the office because he thought that he will lose his mind and he will hit the boss with his shoes the worried parents took mulla nasruddin to the doctor and the doctor after taking the history said the solution is quite simple you have a big photograph of your boss in the 
home and hit that photograph with your shoes five times before going to office and five times after coming back from office okay so mulla nasiruddin said how it's going to help me the doctor said you just follow what i'm telling you okay so mulla nasiruddin followed the same thing and after few days his anger toward boss decreased his energy work performance increased okay after one month the boss called mulla nasiruddin in his cabin and said mulla nasiruddin congratulation i'm going to select you the employee of the month award your performance are awesome in the last one month i'm going to give you a pay increase but just tell me tell me the secret of increase in your performance mulla nasiruddin said boss please don't ask the secret okay so what mulla nasiruddin did he gave outlet to its anger in the form of hitting the photograph of, of his boss with the shoes but in a civilized way we can give outlet to our anger our stress hormone <clears throat> by doing physical exercise by doing progressive muscle relaxation or massage okay so this is a one strategy now the second strategy is a creative transformation okay so <clears throat> i would like to ask you if i put a cow dung at the door of your home at outside your home what will happen it will emanate a bad odor and people will not come to your home okay but instead of that if i use this cow dung as a fertilizer in a garden then what will happen the plant will have flowers and the flowers will emanate fragrance okay so what we have done we have creatively transformed the bad odor of cow dung in a fragrance of flower similarly the stress has lot of energy for example the atom has lot of energy nuclear energy this can be used to make atom bomb and kill millions of people which has happened in hiroshima or nagasaki or we can use this atomic energy nuclear energy to generate electricity okay so we can use that particular energy depending upon us <clears throat> similarly the stress has a lot of energy and we can use it for a productive purpose like for developing a hobby like painting singing dancing and gardening the third strategy is taking care of the root now i'd like to share one story with you there was a queen she has a very beautiful garden people from far away places used to come and see her garden it used to have a lot of beautiful flowers but unfortunately one day the queen become ill she has to go to other city for her treatment she was very worried about her garden but her 10 year old son came and said mother <clears throat> please do not worry about the garden i'll take care of the garden you take care of your health the relieved mother went for the treatment after one month when the queen came back she straight away went to the garden but she became very angry and unhappy seeing the sorry state of affair all the plants were dried up there were no flower and leaves okay so she scolded her son that you have not taken care of the garden properly the son said mother please forgive me i used to work very hard from morning to evening i used to clean each and every leaves flower i used to give water to each and every leaves and flower but i don't know why the plant dried up the mother said my dear son the life of the tree is not in the flowers or leaves it is in the root if you have taken care of the root the plant would have taken care of itself and it would have bear green leaves flower and fruits as you are not taken care of the root the plant dried up dear friend we have forgotten our root we are not only body and mind but we are body mind and soul we have forgotten our soul and that's why 
the plant of our the plant of our life is dried up there are so many so much of stress so much of anxiety depression so much of diseases so if we take care of our root then our tree the life of tree will be a green leaf vegetable flowers and fruits so how to take care of the root by doing mindful meditation so i'm going to discuss these strategies as we go on now we are going to discuss various stress management strategy you have to have a pen and paper and just write it down it's going to useful to transform your life the first principle is exercise okay the exercise is very essential for maintaining mental and physical fitness okay because when you exercise the immunity increases your hormone called as endorphin is released which decreases your stress anxiety your lung capacity improves which is very essential during this corona pandemic we all know that the commonest organ which is affected by corona is lung and if you want to increase your oxygen saturation if you want to maintain the health of your lung then you have to do physical exercise the blood supply to the heart increases so that it become strong and harmful hormones hormones and toxins are removed from a body so it's very essential to exercise you have to do 30 minutes exercise every day okay and you have to keep your body moving whole day so even if the gyms are closed you can do exercise at home you can have an access to the youtube videos and how to do workout in the home just learn from them and just start doing 30 minutes exercise and the exercise which you should do should be combination of exercise which increases your stamina strength and flexibility okay now healthy diet now diet is very essential a bad diet causes disorders and healthy diets make you healthy okay so if you want to maintain your physical fitness and keep yourself away from corona then you have to have a healthy diet so you have to eat homemade freshly cooked vegetarian diet okay so what diet you should consume you should eat cereal pulses beans green leaf green leafy vegetables fruits nuts roots and berries vitamin c is very essential for enhancing immunity which is found in citrus food like oranges then lime so you have to eat seasonally available fruits nowadays mangoes are available which is a high source of vitamin a there's so much of fiber so you can eat whatever fruits which is available seasonally then you have to take a zinc and vitamin d supplementation to uh, maintain your immunity which food you should avoid you should avoid caffeinated sugarated drink junk food sweet fried food which contain trans fat excessive salt dalda ice cream polished rice or maida or margarine avoid packaged food because what happens when the corporation prepare a packaged food it removes the fat and fibers it removes the nutrition and they add sugar they add salt they add lot of coloring agents chemicals preservative which is very bad for your health and it is packaged in a plastic container which is also very bad for your health avoid sugar in any form sugar is very bad sugar is a poison so avoid sugar in any form as far as wheat is concerned do not eat refined flour do not remove the husk and do not use eat maida and avoid bread how to eat see you have to eat what happens because of the frequent eating habit we can we keep on consuming uh, our food whole day okay so you have to eat in a short span of 8 to 10 hours so that other 16 hours to 14 hours your body your pancreas your beta cells and your insulin get rest and the insulin sensitivity is maintained because because of the frequent eating habit and because of the processed food because of sugar the insulin resistance is increasing exponentially and it is a cause it's an underlying cause of obesity diabetes and heart disease so if you want to decrease the insulin resistance and maintain the insulin sensitivity then you have to eat 
within a short period of 8 to 10 hours two to three times okay whatever you have to eat whatever you have to have you have to have during that time only okay and you have to do intermittent fasting okay to maintain optimum health the next thing is you have to drink plenty of water we all know that our body is made up of 70% of water if you are dehydrated your immunity is depleted so to maintain the immunity to maintain the hydration then you have to drink at least 2 to 3 liter of water per day so how do you know that you are drinking adequate amount of water you have to just watch your urine if it is a light yellow or white color then it indicates that you are drinking adequate amount of water if you, your your urine is very dark very dark yellow then you are dehydrated so you have to drink water do not drink cold water which is stored in fridge drink a lukewarm water or whatever water which is in room temperature and do not wait till you are thirsty you have to take a sip of water with regular interval half an hour one hour and maintain the hydration now sleep is very essential for optimum health we all know that during whole day our body undergo wear and tear and this wear and tear is repaired in night during night our body is undergoing healing mechanism repairing mechanism the repairing me mechanism is called as autophagy autophagy is a mechanism in which the dead organelles or damaged organelles or cells are replaced by new organelles so the healing digestion occur during night time also the fat is burned in a deep sleep so if you are obese and want to reduce fat then you have to have a good amount of sleep also the memory is consolidated so you want to increase your memory then you have to have a good sleep certain hormones like melatonin growth hormones are secreted which is very essential these are very essential for optimum health so if you want to maintain optimum health then you have to take at least 7 and a half hour to 8 hour of uninterrupted sleep at night okay laughter now we all know that laughter is the best medicine okay if you laugh your lung expand your oxygenation increase your vital capacity of lung increase your blood flow to the heart increases okay you become stress free your mood changes whatever stressful situation you think at a stress its severity reduce huh? so you become stress free anxiety free your vital capacity increase so laughter is very good for our health also those people who laugh their wrinkles of the face decrease so if you want to remain young forever you have to laugh a lot okay and it's a found in the research that if you laugh for 10 to 15 minutes you can burn 50 calories so what are you waiting for okay watch a comedy movies or mr bean or charlie chaplin and laugh a lot the music therapy music therapy is very essential for making your agitated mind calm soothing your mind so in the research it's found that if you listen to the soft music your heart rate reduces your respiratory reduce your blood pressure reduce your stress anxiety goes away so listen to the music soft music you like when you whenever you are stressed or you can develop a hobby of singing to tame the stress away from your life now social support is very essential now in due to corona pandemic because of lockdown we are not able to meet our friends family members we are locked up in our home okay so it is very essential to keep in contact with your friends and family members with the help of phone with the help of social media you have to express your whatever stress anxiety or problem to them you can listen to their stress problem to other people help them whatever financially information or whatever way so you it in the research it's found that those who have a good social support they have a less stress in their life and they have a less disorders so 
help other people maybe financially with your knowledge or you can give a shoulder to cry if somebody is in severe stress and pain and if they want some tangible help you help them out so social support is very essential journal writing now what happens because of the corona pandemic or the so much of stress man is so busy that other people has no time to listen to what other people is undergoing and people do not like to share their sufferings to other people and that this negativity remain in your in your body and it comes out in the form of mental and physical disorders so if you don't want to share your troubles sufferings your pain then you can put it in a diary you have a diary you write down your suffering problems whatever whatever you, emotions you are undergoing just put in a pay, in a diary in a paper so in the research it's found that those who write diary their stress anxiety reduce they get solution to their problem the asthmatic patient their first expiratory volume increases in hiv patient the cd4 count increases those who are undergoing depression anxiety their mood elevates so if you are having some problem start writing down on a diary develop hobby so you are locked up because of lockdown in your home and this is the best time which can be utilized to read good books learn dancing singing or new skill utilize this time for personal development okay even if you are not going you are not allowed to go out of your home you do not allow to go for vacation make your stay in your home as a vacation it is called as a staycation okay so develop the hobbies because whenever you used to work you used to always have in your mind that if i get a some time i can develop my hobby now this is a time you can utilize to develop your hobby prayer it is said that prayer moves mountain okay so we always pray to ask god okay but pray to the god for the health and safety of all human being not only for yourself but for your family for your friends and whole humanity imagine if billions of people pray for the health of all human being then we will win this battle against corona yoga and pranayam all people know the importance of yoga and pranayam if you follow the yoga and pranayam then you your health will go to the next level the next is a meditation now there are several way which with which we can do meditation but the meditation which i follow is called as mindful meditation okay so how to do mindful meditation what do you mean by mindfulness mindfulness is accepting the life as it is in a non judgmental way living in a present moment not worrying about past and not worrying about future means living in the present moment is called as mindfulness what happens we are either in the past or we are worried about future okay on a lighter note once a politician went to cut his hair the barber asked sir what happened last year you lost the election what was the reason now this politician started the narrating narrating his ordeal but after some time the politician said well look stop stop whenever i come to you to cut my hair you always ask me this question make me angry huh? why do you do it do it purposefully baba said no i don't want to make you angry but what happened when you become angry your hair straight, straighten up and it is very easy for me to cut okay so we are so guilty or we are so angry about whatever things which we have done in past and it doesn't Uh, stop chasing you and we are always uh, uh, very guilty about our past things and sometimes and most of the time we are we are worried about our future mark finney said 
my life was full of worry my life was full of worry most of the thing didn't happen okay so we can we keep on imagining our problem in the future and most of the things doesn't happen okay so past is a history future is a mystery present is a gift that's why it's called as present so you have to live your life in a present moment and it is done with the help of this mindful meditation <clears throat> so how to do mindful meditation <clears throat> so mindful meditation can be done while sitting while lying down what you have to do is you have to give order to your body in the mind that my body is getting relaxed my body is getting relaxed my body is getting relaxed so you have to do it for 3 minutes or 1 minute then you have to say my breathing is relaxed my breathing is relaxed my breathing is relaxed you have to say in the mind after 1 minute then you have to say my mind is becoming relaxed my mind is becoming relaxed my mind is becoming relaxed okay so after 3 minutes then you have to just observe your breath at nostril the air coming in and the air going out the air coming in and the air going out and you have to just feel the sensation you you have to hear the sound it produce and your your nostril is your anchor now what happens our mind is like a monkey it hops from one tree to other our mind hops from one thought to other so when you come to know that you are in some thoughts you have to just bring back your attention at the nostril so this is a second step okay so mindful meditation is not concentration you don't have to make your mind blank okay it is not concentration because concentration will increase stress it is observation it's awareness it is acceptance it is uh, living in a present moment so the anchor is your nostril you have to just observe your breath at nostril and uh, just accept the things whatever sound you are hearing whatever sensation you are feeling if you think that you are in thought you just accept it and bring back your attention at nostril and this is called as mindful meditation start doing mindful meditation for 1 2 minutes increase as you get the benefit of it and there are so much of research done all over the world on mindful meditation and it is found that those people who do mindful meditation their heart rate in decrease respiratory rate decrease blood pressure decrease their diabetes reverse their thinking pattern their intellect enhance their work efficiency increase their relationship their with their find uh, their their partner the colleague the parents the children increase work efficiency increase so that they become successful in their professional life and they attain what is called as the inner satisfaction inner happiness so start practicing mindful meditation now mindful meditation is not that you can do it for 5 minutes and 10 minutes okay so you can use this mindful meditation in your day to day life your eating can become mindful meditation okay for example when you are eating you have to just observe your food just experience its smell just experience its taste just experience and observe its moment in your gut and don't think about anything you are uh it can become mindful meditation if you're walking just walk just have your observation around the nature just accept whatever happening just experience the wind so your eating your walking your work can become mindful meditation okay and if you don't have a time then your sleep can become mindful meditation for example when you go to bed then you have to just lie down and follow this principle or steps which i have told you and if you follow this steps then your and if you go to sleep then your sleep can become mindful meditation so no excuse okay so if you don't have a time for mindful meditation you can do it at the time of sleep and your sleep can become mindful meditation the last but not the least hope hope is very essential for survival we have to always think that there is a light at the end of the tunnel i would like to share one story with you once a group of frogs were traveling the three frogs fall in a deep pit they were 
jumping they were trying to come out of the pit but unfortunately they were not succeeding the other frogs were telling them hey look this pit is too big it's too deep it's very difficult for you to come out of the pit okay you are as good as they listening to this the one frog immediately died the second frog after trying for three steps few steps few jumps it died but the third frog kept on jumping kept on jumping kept on jumping the other frog went away but this frog took rest again start jumping again start jumping took rest again start jumping and after several attempt it came out of the pit when this frog went and meet other frogs the other frogs were very surprised to see this frog alive they said how did you alive we told you we told you that the the, the pit is too big but how did you survive survive this frog said i can't hear okay so this frog didn't listen the negativity of other people he kept on trying he kept on trying and he succeeded so dear friends there are so much of negativity around there's so much of negativity in television social media that this corona pandemic is going to kill all the people there's atmosphere of stress and anxiety but you should have hope in your life uh, hope in your mind you should be hopeful that this too shall pass there would be light at the end of tunnel we are going to win the war against corona pandemic and we are going to come out victorious okay so if you have the hope and if you follow this principle it will help you to remain mentally and physically fit during this corona pandemic so to conclude my talk if you do you have to do 30 minutes exercise every day you have to eat healthy homemade freshly prepared plant based vegetarian diet you have to drink 2 to 3 liter of water making sure that you, your urine is light yellow or white in color if you have to take 7 and 1/2 hour to 8 hour of uninterrupted sleep at night you have to laugh a lot you have to listen to the soft music you have to start writing your diary and put your emotions and pain into it you have to have a social support take the help of it give the help to other people keep connected you have to have a positive communication with your partner okay develop a hobby like reading dancing singing you have to pray you have to do yoga pranayama and meditation and you have you have hope in your life okay so dear friend hope i have shared with you all this principle if you implement this principle it will completely transform your life it will help you to navigate this challenging time and emerge out victoriously so thank you so much for your kind attention and kind time if you have any questions you can write in the chat box if you are facebook you write down the comment box i would be very uh, happy to answer it thank you so much thank you so much write in the chat box if you have any comments comment box i'd be more more than happy to answer your questions thank you so much all of you for being here i pray for your health happiness and we are going to win this war against corona pandemic thank you so much have a wonderful day ahead thank you so much